The Sweet Baby Ink. My God, guys, has anybody had a worse year than Sweet Baby Ink? Apart from maybe Ubisoft. Disney. But <laughs> Disney, yes, but both Ubisoft and Disney are still able to actually function, whereas Sweet Baby Ink more or less can't anymore. They, they've had to private their Twitter. They've had to go almost into hiding. They had to stop announcing what they're working on. They've done all this stuff. And now it turns out that if you've ever worked for the accursed sweet baby, then uh, you're going to have a real hard time getting a future gig. As we discovered, as it came out earlier, uh, well, it was actually the end of last week. Uh, that it all sort of started to come out that uh, Ubisoft had been um, a little bit naughty. Uh, mm -hmm. They decided to try and rope the New York Times in to fight their battles for them mm -hmm. against you know gamers who are completely justified in being very disinterested in what they have to offer. And, of course, the country of Japan that they've managed to offend on a cultural level. They brought in the New York Times once a respected newspaper now barely fit for wiping your ass and um, had them write a hit piece about gamers. But the hit piece in question was referring to a particular, I'm going to say gentleman, called uh, Kazuma Hashimoto, who Ooh. claimed to be an expert in uh, Japan and everything Japanese. And I mean, this probably is their real name, but who would know? Doesn't matter much because it turned out through the proceedings, um, that Mr. Hashimoto is a former Sweet Baby Inc. employee, immediately shattering any of Ubisoft's lies that they had not worked with the insidious DEI consultancy firm. Guys, do you know anything about this? No, well, we uh, we covered a little bit of this on Reality Based. Uh, Dobby was, was one of the, the guests on that show and i really wanted to point out the the collusion between a mainstream media outlet and one of one of the most iconic publishers in in gaming when it came to to ubisoft talk about a, a fall from from grace they made lots of great games and now they're they're in this state and it just goes to show that kind of collusion exposes the desperation of the opposition this this uh, this thing who acted as a as an intermediary and mm -hmm. just goes to show that that's the cherry on top of the cake for this utter disaster mm -hmm. for not just Ubisoft or for the New York Times but also for Sweet Baby Inc. Who, as you said before, will cannot operate now <laughs> at not all, the and they've they got to them. and they've got to use fronts. Yep. They have, and they creep into things now. I mean, we knew this would happen. This was obviously the inevitable next step, the next tactic for Sweet Baby Inc., before eventually just completely rebranding and and or registering a new company and starting over and mo moving everything. And, and you know, th this will never end. Gamergate is forever. That's why I started using the hashtag Gamergate forever, because Gamergate 1, Gamergate 2 really doesn't matter anymore. This is not going to end anytime soon. The only way Gamergate 2 can be stopped is if we lose interest, and I ain't losing interest anytime soon. It's been seven months, and I'm still all in. What about you? Is I'm this like in. how we name Batman films, like Batman 1, Batman 2, Batman, Batman Forever? Yeah. I, I, I was thinking next time it will be Gamergate and Robin. Yeah. Oh, no. And then, like, and then, then it will disappear for 10, 15 years, and it will be Gamergate Begins, and then The Dark Gamer, and then The Dark oh, Gamer no. Rises, and then The Gamergate. And then this idiot Hashimoto's like, I'm going to play the victim and I'm going to pretend I had nothing to do with the game. Ten seconds later, after looking at the game details, yeah, he has everything to do with the game. But it's like, I am going to play the victim. Yeah, uh, this is of course part of the course. Yeah, immediately. If you look at some of the quotes. So basically the article in the MYT was written by a guy called Zachary Small. Mm -hmm. uh, he claimed in the article that Japanese people, sorry, no, Rather, Hashimoto claimed in the article that Japanese people were not actually upset about Assassin's Creed Shadows. Um, Is he living in like a parallel universe? Something, 
I have something for this. Hang on. Uh, you liar! Yeah. There it is. This um, is in a parallel universe. It's like, hey, the Japanese are perfectly happy. That's how our opposition frames things. This is a clear case of narrative control. That has completely... <clears throat> excuse me. That has completely failed, and this... Mm. Uh, collusion between these two companies is an example of damage control. 100%. Uh, I mean, the, the thing is, the thing that Gamergate has accomplished this time that it was never quite able to accomplish in its first iteration was the um, disruption of their ability to spin a narrative. The, at this point, there are just too many people hmm. who don't buy a single word that they are saying, mm. not for a fucking second. You have to be an Alyssa simp or, or something like that to actually think that anything you hear from these people, these companies that, that coincidentally keep ending up working together is actually something you can trust. Utter mm. bollocks. Um, the idea that Japan is not pissed off about this is absurd. I mean, even if we were to just take this at face value, let's remember for a second how graciously they um, bestowed praise and admiration on Sucker Punch when they made uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Mm -hmm. They basically gave them the key to the island, I think, was, was something mm -hmm. that was said. The, the devs of uh, Sucker Punch were given free access and reign to the island of Tsushima. Such was the praise that they got from Japan. That is how Japanese people operate. When you respect their culture, they will bestow absolute honor on you. When you shit on their culture, you are lower than dirt. And, and it's, it's absurd. They uh, tried to say, Hashimoto tried to say, that actually the comments were written by Westerners using Google Translate. No, they weren't, because it was the Japanese that first started the comments. And mm -hmm. when you when sites, especially social media, automatically translate, or if you click on translate, yeah, that's going to look absolutely wrong. But it was the Japanese that were that are so totally pissed off. It wasn't that anybody was trying to do like fake translations. It was the fact that when you use things like social media, etc., and you go to uh, see translation, then yeah, it's not going to be correct. There's always issues with it. It's projection. It's clear projection. Our opposition cannot do anything organically. So mm -hmm. they no. accuse people like us of creating a synthetic campaign against their projects. It's clear projection, folks. Absolutely. I mean, they, these are the kinds of things that they do. They invent scandals. They invent narratives. They, they. I mean, we've we've seen this again, of course, recently with the attempts to mass flag YouTubers uh, for you know what they call a hate campaign. But the m method that they have chosen to go about it is in itself a hate campaign. Okay. So, of course, once again, it's projection. They only see the world through the lens of what they would do in a situation. And thus, that's when they come up with these, ironically, fucking conspiracy theories. Uh, it's it, You can't make it up. It's word for word the language they use to discuss us. We're minding our own business. We're sitting here independently going, oh, that's a good story. I'm going to shit on them today, you know, because they've pissed us off independently and individually. And then they, they say, oh, no, no, it can't be. It can't be organic. It must be a narrative that the right is trying to spin or something. Why? Because that's what they've spent decades doing. That's the only way they can see these things coming together. There's, it's impossible for something to actually happen organically, except it does all the time against them. 